Hi, I'm Ashton, and today is Patches and Parley. Um, if you have not watched Patches and Parley before, it's a series on my channel where I do something creative. That is so rude. It's a series on my channel where I do something creative. It started with me sewing patches onto my jacket. It has evolved into just literally anything DIY, I guess. Today, I'm gonna be doing some art for a project that I'm not gonna tell you about yet. If you follow my Twitter, you might know what I'm talking about, but I'm not gonna like expose it to my, this audience yet. You'll know eventually, but I do wanna like get all the art done before I actually talk about it here, so. So I've been working on this series of drawings for a while, and I was just watching a quick and live stream that was up from like months ago, and I was like, I, sh I feel like talking, like I wanna talk, I don't wanna listen right now. So I'm just gonna talk to you guys while I continue to do these arts. Um, so if I'm looking down a lot during this video, now you know why, but anyways, Patches and Parley series where I talk about something political and or queer related, and do something creative simultaneously, so. Today I wanted to have a discussion about capitalism, but oh my god, I just realized that my plugs and my choker match. I'm a god. Anyways, as I was saying, today I wanted to have a discussion about capitalism and ethical consumption and what that means under capitalism. So a common thread I've seen among leftist circles online and in real life is a kind of concern about how one can consume more ethically under capitalism. And this video is also slightly prompted by a tweet that my friend Ollie put out in which they asked, how does one consume ethically under capitalism? In a nutshell. So if you're watching this, Ollie, hello, this one's for you. Mwah. <laughs> oh, that was not the color I wanted. And the more that I've like dived into leftism, if you will, the more that I think about the way that consumer culture impacts all of us and the way that like consumerism as a whole contributes to capitalism in a kind of cyclical way. But I don't want this video to be like a deep dive into consumerist ethics because that's a whole shit storm and I could talk for hours about that, but I don't necessarily want to right now. I just kind of wanted to discuss some of the more practical aspects of how one can consume more ethically for lack of a different phrase. <laughs> um, this discussion also kind of stems from a very common phrase, I suppose, that I see thrown around in leftist circles, which is there is no ethical consumption under capitalism, which I'm sure many of you have heard before, and it is a phrase that I wholeheartedly agree with, but I feel that it's also a phrase that kind of removes some of the responsibility individuals do have when it comes to consumption. So the way that I kind of rephrase that for myself is, well, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism, there are ways to make your own consumption more ethical, which A, makes you feel a bit better about yourself, B, helps you play less into consumerism as a whole, and C, help you support small businesses, artists, people that genuinely deserve more support, unlike, you know, people like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. Jack from Twitter, all of our favorite multimillionaires. But before I get into actually discussing the ways that have helped me become a more ethical consumer and might help you become that way as well, I do want to just address that I don't believe the burden of addressing consumption and overconsumption, quite frankly, the horrors of capitalism, should rest on consumers. And I believe that blame and that responsibility should fall on those that regularly exploit the working class. So, you know, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, people of that nature. But this isn't going to be another rant video about millionaires. I just want to talk about ways that a single individual consumer can feel better about their own purchases because at the end of the day, we all do have to consume to some extent. Like sure, I've had a lot of the same shirts for five years, but once they do start getting holes in them to the point where my nipples are hanging out, I'm not just gonna walk around like, I'm sorry, you can see my entire torso. I'm not allowed to consume because capitalism is bad. Like we all do have to consume at some point and I get that. And I don't want to blame any one individual or any, you know, family or community or whatever for buying into consumerism because it is something that we do have to kind of contribute to to survive in a capitalist society and that's okay and I don't think anybody should blame themselves individually for that. I completely understand and completely em empath- I have so much trouble with this word but I completely understand and I completely empathize with people that do need to use services like Amazon. 
because Amazon is at the end of the day really accessible. And yeah, it is owned by one of the most despicable human beings on the planet. The fact that Bezos is an absolutely awful human is his own fault. And yes, the people that need to use Amazon are directly supporting him, but those people's needs still need to be fulfilled. And we can't take away things that are accessible purely because the person at the top of that chain of command is disgusting and benefiting from it. If you need to use things like Amazon, it's not your fault for needing to use it. Structural change is needed to dissolve giant corporations and giant monopolies, and it is not one person's direct responsibility to do that. It's a huge thing. It's a thing that requires huge structural change. And while I would advise avoiding Amazon as much as possible, if you have a gift card per se, you don't just want to not use it. Amazon already has that money. Of course, if there's something that you need from Amazon, see if you can find it locally or through an independent seller. And again, if you can't do that, if you're not in a place where financially you're able to do that, that is okay. Do not blame yourself for that. That is not your fault. Yes, it is difficult to avoid things like Amazon. One thing that I would advise if you do need to use Amazon at all is be aware of the workers' conditions, be aware of what you're contributing to, and don't let that make you feel guilty, again, because that's not your fault. But I feel it is still important to be informed. In a similar vein, I would say keep up with the workers' rights there. There's an upcoming Amazon strike where workers are, you know, refusing to give out their labor because of the unfair working conditions in many Amazon warehouses and distributing centers, etc. That is on Prime Day. Do not shop on Prime Day. I would say that is one small but important step in how to become a more ethical consumer. Stay updated on the things that you do consume from, like a strike in an Amazon distributing center. You know when you should very much avoid using Amazon as opposed to, you know, the everyday Amazon is a last resort. But on days where there are worker strikes, it is even more important to stand in solidarity with those workers and refuse to use those businesses on those days. And yes, that also means all of Amazon's sub companies. So Audible, Goodreads, whatever else Amazon owns. I'm going to leave a link in the description with more information on that upcoming strike. This video will go up before that strike happens, so get yourself educated on that. Educate your family and friends. Do not buy from Amazon on the days that workers are striking. Thank you. <laughs> Another thing that I wanted to hit on, which I also uh, mentioned when I was replying to my friend Ollie's tweet, is is that the more time you kind of think about the purchases that you're making, the more likely you are to not do it. I'm not telling you never to make purchases. Obviously, we all like stuff. I have an enamel pin collection. I have a rock collection. I have a collection of buttons. But the majority of those things, as I've talked about before, I do get from people that I believe genuinely deserve support as opposed to Amazon. I believe the more that we think about our own consumerist tendencies, the more likely we are to want to combat them and try to combat them as opposed to just thinking about it, you know? So something I've been trying to do recently is buy secondhand. There are a few ways that you can do this. One that I've been taking advantage of is Depop. My ears were at two gauge or six millimeters for maybe a year and I got quite a few pairs of two gauge plugs, but I am now a zero gauge and I can't wear the two gauge plugs anymore. So, so I'm selling a lot of my two gauge ones on Depop and I got some replacements in the size that I wear now also from Depop. So it's basically like an online secondhand store where you get to buy things and sell things directly to and from the people that had them or are going to have them. You know, there's no like thrift store in the middle of it. It is generally considered a good thing to give the things that you own and no longer use a second life. Like the plugs that I can't wear anymore, another person can. And the plugs that this person couldn't wear anymore, I can. I didn't have to buy a new pair of rainbow acrylic plugs. I got to buy a pair for less money from somebody that's already used them. So there's not more acrylic going into production because I'm wearing these. Somebody had already gotten them. I didn't have to go on Amazon and buy a pair of rainbow plugs. I found a pair that somebody had already used in my size so that these guys have two owners and two lives and two uses. It's better to do this than to buy a whole new pair and create more waste and, you know, put more money into the people's pockets who are mass producing these and making a shit ton of money. I also recently needed some new shirts because testosterone is making my shoulders broader and a lot of my older shirts just don't fit me anymore or they are band tees of bands that I don't particularly love anymore. So I found a gloss shirt and a anti-flag shirt on Depop from somebody that doesn't wear them anymore and wanted to give them another home and here I am wearing those shirts that otherwise might have just been thrown away or eaten up by moths. 
If you need some new clothes or some new jewelry, check out Depop, check out your local thrift store if you have one. Consider buying those things secondhand so that those things don't have to be made again when they're already out there waiting to be given a new life. Another shirt that I got recently that I really, really love is from Fennec Design Co. Um, it is absolutely one of my favorite shirts. It was hand screen printed by their team. Plus the design was done by a small artist, it's super unique. You can find it all through Etsy. I'll link them down below as well. There are ways to get cool clothes, even new clothes, in ways that are far more ethical than shopping at big name, big brands, blah, 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 blah. I would also say though, before you buy something, just think about, do I already have this thing? You can repurpose things all the time. And this is something that I love doing. I like hoard things in order to repurpose them. <laughs> like this little box that I keep some push pins in, um, held some gummy candies that my dad had. And I was like, I can use that box. I don't have to go to the container store. I can just put my push pins in here. Same thing for this box that I keep my clothes pins in. I have a shit ton of thread that I would originally have used for friendship bracelets, but since I don't make those as much anymore, I use them to sew patches on. Just doing individual little things like that can make you feel a lot better about the things that you are buying, knowing that you actually do need those things and it's not just something that you could make out of something that you already have. This is a box that my glasses came in and I could have just recycled it, but instead I'm using it to hold some patches that I have yet to sew on because I don't have anywhere else to keep them and this is very convenient and once again, I didn't have to go to the container store. <laughs> something that's also helped me is like making a list of things that I need or things that I might want and keeping that list for a while to think about before I actually buy those things. Um, you know, if it's something like soap, obviously get the soap, you gotta wash your hands. But if it's something like that rainbow flag, for example, I've been wanting the original gay pride flag design for a long time and like I got it because I've been sitting on that idea for ages. I didn't just want to impulsively buy it and then not use it. It's something that I genuinely wanted, something that I want to hang up in my dorm room and like something that I'll probably carry with me the rest of my life. So it's not something that's going to go to waste. That also allows you to buy things when you are already out and about. If you keep a list like that of the things that you, of the things that you need or things that you really, really want, it can also help you get a lot more things done at once I've found. I went out with my boyfriend to lunch the other day and it was like right next to a place where I could get eyeliner and eyeliner was on my list and I was like well I don't want to buy it from Amazon and I can just go to the store next to the place where we already are get eyeliner save myself a trip from going back to that place and then going back to my house you know like if you have the opportunity to get something in a place where you already are as opposed to like driving across the town the next day to the place where you were the previous day to get a thing that you were already thinking about. Does that make sense? I think you get what I mean. So yeah, keep a list. I am a list fiend. I love lists. I would die for a good list, <laughs> but like, so that might not work for everybody, but that is something that's helped me and it is something I would recommend at least giving it a shot. You can keep lists digitally. You don't even have to waste paper on it and then it's always in your pocket. It's so good. Now I want to talk a little bit about the larger issue as a whole. Um, as I said in the beginning, there is genuinely no ethical consumption under capitalism. Even if your consumerist tendencies lean towards more ethical, if you always shop at your mom and pop coffee store instead of Starbucks, if you always buy from local artists instead of, you know, corporations that mass produce prints, at the end of the day, value is created by labor. The ethical consumption is driven by the idea that individuals can like vote with their dollar in a sense and change the way that consumerism works. And I don't believe that we can. If we could, it would have already happened. A lot of capitalists talk about how competition creates the best products, considering the way that large corporations like Nestle, Walmart, Amazon exploit their workers to an extreme. I'm gonna link below a good article on the theory behind all of this because I do think it is a interesting and extremely important thing to read up on, but at the end of the day, individuals are not responsible for tackling the issues that capitalism has created. No matter how ethical you try to be, the reality is that someone is probably still being exploited, or some natural resource is probably still being exploited. And at the end of the day, individuals like you and I, you know, people that do things in good faith, 
are not going to change anything. I feel like it's put really well by one of the articles that I'm going to link in the description that I'm going to read from now. As long as the majority of wealth and resources are owned and controlled by a minority exploiting class, producing for profit instead of human need, workers' rights and environmental sustainability will always suffer. The choices of individual consumers are ineffectual within the context of capitalist production. At the end of the day, buying from small artists might make you feel better, might help those small artists out, but people are still being exploited and capitalism still is an issue. So while I would advise you to be a more ethical consumer, I would also advise you to think about the way that capitalism tricks you into thinking that any of your consumption can be ethical in a system where the majority of people are being exploited by that very top class. All of that said, just because there is a huge structural issue with capitalism, I don't think that means that we shouldn't as individuals do our best to support small businesses that do need the support more than companies like Amazon, like Nestle. There's so much talk about this in political philosophy and in leftist politics circles in general, but like it's a much bigger issue than the individual consumer. And if you do want to do your best to be an ethical consumer on an individual level, I believe that you should. I'm not going to stop you. And I do the same for myself, if not only to support smaller artists that need it as opposed to large corporations. But just be aware of the root causes of consumerism in general. Be aware of the root causes of exploitation. Read some Marx, read some Lenin, read some Emma Goldman. But like, so yeah, is the title of this video a bit misleading because I don't think there's ethical consumption under capitalism and I tried to make you think that I'm gonna tell you how to be an ethical consumer under capitalism? Yes, sure. Is this clickbait? Is this the first time I've clickbaited? Maybe? No? I don't know. Anyways, I guess to sum it all up as I finish drawing this last thing, you can individually do your best to be an ethical consumer but at the end of the day, while we are still living under capitalism, it's not going to do anything on a larger scale. Yes, you may make small differences in your personal community around you and in your own life, but it is still important to work for the larger dismantlement of the system of capitalism because not everybody is going to be an ethical consumer. Long story short, the only ethical consumption under capitalism is eating the rich. <laughs> So if you want to be an ethical consumer for your own mental state, cool, rad. But while you're doing that, I would also highly recommend you educate yourself on the dynamics of capitalism and on class struggle and on Marxism and on socialism and on all those different types of things. Honestly, if you're like a centrist and you normally watch me for like trans things and you're just like watching this video, I feel really bad for you. You've been like really thrown into all of this at once. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, check out the links left in the description for a much more concise and well-worded and statistically backed, you know, things that I cannot personally give you at the moment because I'm trying to just draw and I decided this would be a great time to rant about capitalism. Why am I like this? Goodbye. I hope that when you finally eat a billionaire, you remember to season him well, and I will talk to you later, maybe. <laughs>